good morning everyone I've been asked to show you how I make my sauce this is a very simple marinara sauce uh, it really doesn't take long to cook and it is very simple and delicious now what I use yes why am I making it today because tomorrow is the twin birthday and I promised them rigata ravioli of course so I need to make a big batch of sauce because I am bringing everything over to their house so here we go I have this is the type of tomato I use it is a strained tomato with basil and it is just a simple puree that's all it is lately this is the type I use because it's also in a glassware rather than a can and it just makes me feel better knowing that I'm not adding other stuff to the environment that we don't need to we can even keep the jars if you want to make your own uh, tomatoes in the summer just more for environmental uses if I could get these tomatoes these are the ones I'm gonna get all because it is glass uh, it's just better for us too right when it's in the glass uh, don't have to worry about the metal leaking into the tomatoes so it's way better for us and I'm gonna use two of those and these are very thick so they're gonna end up getting diluted with some water I am gonna add some clove to my recipe I'm gonna add some black pepper and I have a little bit of mushroom powder in here and I'm gonna add some of that I have a bay leaf this is a fresh bay leaf thanks to my aunt I've got three garlics that I'm gonna crush and here I have just half a celery stick and I have uh, a sm kind of smallish carrot that I cut there we go I just cut it up in smaller pieces because I don't want to see big pieces of carrot in my in my sauce um, I'm going to be using some delicious maple and here is my basil pesto I'm going to be using some of that so it's very simple and I'm just going to show you how I put it together we're going to push everything over to the side and I might be using some sun-dried tomatoes okay so here we go I'm just going to get myself organized now if you don't have the strained tomatoes you can get uh, the whole tomatoes and then put them in a blender and they'll be strained for you the only difference is that you might get some seeds in that one and this one will have no seeds whatsoever my beautiful ugly pot I know I should get rid of it but I just can't I love it and that's what I am using today okay so here we go we're in camera we're gonna start off with some beautiful olive oil now I don't measure guys but it's up to you how much oil you really want to put in your sauce the more olive oil you put the richer your sauce is gonna be and right now I think I've got about maybe four <laughs> tablespoons of olive oil to this I'm gonna add one and a half pinches of baking soda and you're asking me why are you putting baking soda in your sauce well what baking soda does is it kills the acidity in the tomato and if some people have a hard time digesting tomatoes because of the acidity I mean I don't have that problem anymore but I know when I was a meat eater and I would have tomatoes it would just like burn a hole in my stomach but since I don't eat meat I really don't need to add it but it's a habit so I put it in anyhow uh, to that I am going to put one two large pinches of black pepper I would say about maybe a half a teaspoon if not more again it's all to taste you ready there you go I've got about a tablespoon of maple syrup one large pinch a clove I might put a little more later remember food is all about tasting uh, taste your food and see what you want to add extra because that's where the magic is now this is about a teaspoon of shiitake mushroom powder maybe a little more than a teaspoon yeah, about a teaspoon 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 and a half and that's going to add a nice richness to your sauce if you don't have it don't worry about it don't put it I am going to chop up my onion 
I'm telling you, this sauce is very easy, very simple, and the best part about it is that you get to taste the fresh tomato sauce rather than anything else that you're going to add to it. And if you have pasta more often, make a big batch and keep it in the refrigerator. So if you want to make a little bit of uh, pasta during the week, you have it already nice and ready. If you want to make a tomato risotto, you'll have your sauce ready. If you want to put it in some seitan meat, you have your sauce ready. So if you can, make a bigger batch and have it on hand. So who's tried the haagen vegan ice cream? Oh my God. That's what's going to keep me from not losing weight. Gee, so good, guys. If you haven't tried it, you must try it. It is something else. And if also, I'm just going to, let me put this on. If you're making a sauce, right, and you have a little bit, maybe a small Tupperware sauce that's left over in your fridge from the week before, don't be afraid to throw it in your new batch of sauce because it just adds that much more flavor and you're not wasting, guys. So just take that sauce if you have extra in the fridge and just dump it in your fresh sauce that you're making. That's what I do. If I have some, trust me, it goes right into my new sauce. And it's not that the sauce is old because my husband loves his pasta, so we have sauce in the fridge all the time and if you haven't tried my seitan with the sauce in it I could link it for you so if you look at the end of my video you're gonna see there will be links and I'll put that one up for you so you could try it if you want to try seitan with spaghetti sauce in it it's really really good okay so here we go we've got one onion into the pot and we're going to turn this baby up and start cooking some of this down. I'm going to apologize ahead of time for the sound. Okay, we're going to add some salt to this. Now again, salt is really up to you how much salt you want. I use a lot because it's gonna season my my sauce, that's for sure. I use about maybe a half a tablespoon of salt, but really it's up to you how much salt you want. So you wanna get this going on high and you wanna start caramelizing your, your onions. Now, to this we're gonna add some crushed garlic now, I'm going to use a crush, and I'll tell you why I'm using a crush. If, it, if I was doing this sauce just for me and my husband and my daughter Erica, I would just simply cut this. I would make here, I'll show you. I would basically just make a cut like this and just throw it right into the sauce, and then whoever finds it in their plate kind of pushes it over. But because I'm bringing this sauce over, and my daughter is going to have her mother-in-law over I don't want them to find a chunk of garlic in their in their ravioli tomorrow so I am gonna crush it this way it mixes up really nice and I'm using three large cloves so. And if you want your sauce even sweeter, then just add a little extra maple. I use maple because it's the safer sweetness for me. Uh, not that our white sugar is a bad white, I mean, isn't vegan. Here in Montreal, our sugar is vegan. They do not use any animal bones to make our sugar. I find that the maple is way better and we like it better. Not that your sauce is going to taste of maple. It will not taste of maple. Trust me. Okay. Here we go. Just let it go. Then we're going to start adding our other ingredients.
And yes, I'm making a lot of ravioli, guys. Oh, boy. I made six cups of semolina. So it's going to be a lot of pasta. So hopefully, because my daughter does have to work, so hopefully my husband is going to come back and he's going to give me a hand and get this going. But if anybody wants to know how I make my ravioli, there is a video. And if you haven't participated in the giveaway, now's your chance to do it. Because next week, we're going to use one of those um, random drawers. And uh, uh, I'm going to try and do it online so you guys can see me do it. And if my name comes up, then... Because I didn't want to comment this time around because I didn't want my name to pop up every time I'm going to use that machine. So... Um, if you, my name does come up, I did end up commenting on a couple of comments. Uh, I am just going to spin it again and make sure that somebody else's name comes up. So I'm just going to let this cook down a little longer and then I'm going to start adding my tomato. Now because this tomato, because this tomato is very thick, I will be adding water to the to the sauce and it only looks dark like that because I added the shiitake mushroom now uh, the powder uh, if you don't want you can add the powder later it's really up to you but I like to just dump everything in and let it just pick up all the flavors and then we're going to add our tomato. So cook that down a bit. Of celery and I'm adding my tomatoes I've got one jar two jars first I'm gonna take this and fill it up with water give it a good shake Then I'm going to take my other empty jar, I'm going to pour that water into that. There we go, give that a good shake. And always check the bottom because sometimes it just, you don't pick up that tomato at the bottom and it's just going to be... There we go. So that is two jars. Now because I'm going to make a bigger sauce, I might add another jar now. But before I do that, I'm going to take my sun-dried tomatoes and I'm going to add some water to that. Here we go, and I'm adding this, oops, sorry about that guys, I'm adding this to my sauce. Now, this is the amount I normally make if it's just for my family, but because I am making, did you see that? My voice cracked. Because I am making um, a larger batch, I am going to go get another one of these jar tomatoes, and I'm going to add more to it because we are a big group of people and I want to make sure that I have enough, enough sauce for everybody. But 
if you're making it just for you and your family this is more than enough to make a sauce really is taste it if you want more salt which I do just add it I'm gonna add a little water here Now I have my parsley pesto. I don't have any fresh parsley because I still have to go out and do groceries. But I am going to use my pesto. And I'm going to use just one for now. And then I am going to add some at the very end when my sauce is done. So this is how simple it is guys. And now you're just gonna let this cook down. If you see it starts coming to a boil, you wanna lower it. Once it comes to a boil, you wanna lower this and you want to simmer it till it gets as thick as you want it. I could tell you simmer it for an hour because this already tastes good. I could tell you simmer it for an hour and I can tell you simmer for an hour and a half. It really is up to you how long you wanna simmer this and it is very simple and it's very easy if you like it thicker simmer it a little longer and if you want it more liquidy simmer less instead of an hour do it 45 minutes but you do want to cook down the tomato so it tastes like a sauce and not just like a tomato that came out of a jar so we're going to let this boil up first and then we're going to lower it and we're going to put a lid half cocked what I mean by that is I am not going to close my pot. I'm just going to leave the handle there that when I do place my lid, it stays open that the steam can escape. But that's how easy it is, guys. Don't forget to put that bay leaf. There we go. That's going to add some beautiful flavors to your sauce. And that's it, guys. You could put one to two bay leaf. It really is up to you. And don't forget, guys, these are your basic. This is your basic recipe. If you want it a little saltier, add more salt. If you want it a little sweeter, add more maple. Uh, if you want it spicy, add some chili. That is really up to you on how you want to make your sauce. But this is your basic ingredient. You don't need more than this. And you don't need to have your carrots and your celery chopped up fine because it will pick up the flavor in here. And that's about it, guys. Very simple. I will check it before I, uh, before it's finished cooking, I will check it for added ingredients that I feel that my sauce might need. Especially when I'm always adding things into my sauce. If I'm adding more water or I'm adding more tomato, I always have to readjust. But the recipe is very simple, and I promise you, you're going to enjoy it, especially on some homemade pasta, guys. Don't forget, you got to try that pasta. And if you don't have a machine, uh, I have a link on my website where you can go get it, and it's not that expensive. But there's always that chance where you can win it, so don't forget to go and put your name, comment under the video where you can win that machine. And if you don't want, if you don't have a machine and you want to try making that pasta now, you could always hand roll it out. I'll put a link where you can hand roll the pasta yourself. So it's very simple to make pasta, fresh pasta. Once you've had that, guys, you can never go back. Don't be, don't be afraid to taste it. And add whatever else you want. I'm adding some basil oil, some extra salt, I'm going to put a little extra pinch of clove. And another one or two pinches of black pepper. And that's how you make sauce. You got to make it that you like it. Because I could give you a recipe and you might not be happy with it. But those are very simple ingredients to use. And I promise you, once you play around and you get it to the taste you like, those are all the ingredients you need. And those are going to be just super fantastic it's just going to be a fantastic sauce so there you go i will also put up a video non-talk for reference but it really is up to you how you want your sauce to taste 
so i just gave you the basic tools the rest is really up to you and guess what guys i'll see you in my next video for more videos like this make sure to subscribe to connie's rawsome kitchen give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends